Check that action out. Hey, welcome everybody. It's another edition of Nevada County Zone. Let's get cooking the highest rated cooking show on public access. And today I'm thrilled to tell you that we are joined by Cosmo Merriweather. Here's Cosmo. Let's hear from the studio audience. Oh, thank well, you. Thank there's you. hundreds of people out there. And Cosmo is a local Grass Valley resident who has brought with us what recipe? What are we doing today? Well, we're going to be making a uh, triple chocolate salmon cake. No, ah, I joking. love it! I'm joking. They're crispy, <laughs> delicious little patties of... Uh, Savory goodness. Savory goodness. Salmon so, cakes. Salmon cakes. Salmon cakes. Slam and, can we call them slam and salmon cakes? You could call them whatever you want. Just don't okay, call them late to dinner. We are. I, 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 I. Um, we are going to be making. Well, I say we. Cosmo's going to do all the work while I stand by idly. Uh, but Cosmo's going to make slam and salmon cakes. And um, let us get started. Although I, I'll have a comment a little bit later on. Where do we start with salmon cakes? Which I want to let you know, when Cosmo told me what the recipe was, I was so psyched because I love salmon cakes. Yeah. Well, um, it's a great way to use uh, leftover salmon. You can also make them with fresh salmon, but you have to make the recipe a little different. So we're going to make this today with canned salmon, actually. We've got um, some wild-caught pink Alaskan salmon. I have ah. two six-ounce cans here. And so that's what we'll start with. That's this here. That's correct. Um, I was a little concerned there were no labels, and I was thinking, cat food, but it really is salmon. That's well, you'll have to find we'll out. We'll find out. This, these could be cat food cakes, which your cat would like. I, with well, As delicious as we're going to make them, you wouldn't tell the difference. Well, oh, me. I love it. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So first of all, we'll start with just putting these uh, cans right in there. Um, it's okay to leave a little bit of the juice in one. I've drained one of these cans. Okay. And the other one I'll leave just to add some moisture to the cake. Um, and so with these, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress this up a little bit. We'll make this with some jalapenos, mm. some, um, some red peppers. But you can simplify this recipe all you really want because what you really need is the protein, which is uh, the salmon, the salmon, and then you just need the bread. Here I've got two different types of breadcrumbs um, because that's what I like. Um, but you basically just need the protein, the breadcrumbs, the binder, which is the egg, and also mayonnaise, which is what we're going to do, and okay. then some kind of little fun thing in the filling, like even if you just used onions, this would be a great recipe. It would be delicious, I'm sure. Now, yeah. I... I don't want to throw you off target at all, but if I had leftover salmon, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't have juice necessarily, so what do you recommend adding in? Well, this actually um, is a little tiny bit too much juice, I'm just going to spoon some of this out. Take a little bit out, here, so we yeah. don't need that much, huh? Yeah, okay. not quite that much. So, I would say... Um, well, I mean, could you use white wine, perhaps, if it were leftover salmon? You absolutely could, and right? as long as it was um, a pretty dry wine and not yeah. necessarily a sweet well, wine a sweet that would wine. um that would be absolutely delicious oh, well. All right. so uh next come the breadcrumbs and so here i've got um half and half this is panko on this side and then over here are a more just traditional um crumbled bread okay um and so uh always on this recipe you want to start with the amount of salmon that you're working with and then you want to kind of fudge the ingredients one way or another depending on um, how the texture turns out. Right, so don't overdo it on the ingredients until you feel how everything's meshed. Absolutely, you can always add more of other stuff, but you can never add more salmon if you use all you have, so. Right, smart. So uh, that is also one thing, whether you're making salmon cakes, crab cakes, anything like that, you want there to be enough protein in there right. because that's what makes that flavor, that's what makes it enjoyable to eat. Otherwise, we're just eating a fried cracker. So we have, what was it, how, how big were the cans, two six-ounce cans? The two six-ounce cans. So here we've got 12 ounces of uh, wild pink Alaskan salmon. Mm. And how many cakes do you think this will end up becoming? It depends how hungry you are. Ah, well, um, it could be one gigantic cake, I suppose. It would make about four big size, okay. kind of big size ones. So we're going to start off by adding just half of our breadcrumbs here. And I'm going to add um, some of the mixture here of each. And then next we've got um, our binder, 
And so for two cans of salmon, I'm always going to only add two eggs. Okay. That's that's all we're going to do with and that. yolks and white, right? That's right. The whole thing's just go so right I, in there. I love how you cook, because you're cooking by texture, you know, make sure we have the right mix. And I think that's a really, you know, a better way to... That's correct. And I, I like to, when I tell people um, recipes that I cook with, um, I like to say, this is what you start with, and then... And then you got to play with it. It's not going to be the same every time. Right. What if your eggs are smaller? What if your, you know, salmon is dry? What right. if, you know, there's a lot of different things to deal with here. That's right. So we're going to start up just by mixing this up a little bit. And one thing that you want to do while you're um, uh, making salmon cakes, but especially if you're making crab cakes, which is a little bit different recipe, you want to um, you want to leave nice chunky um, pieces. You don't want to, uh, to right. mix it so much so that it all becomes a total mush. Right, right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into, you know, little, little sized pieces. But then as we continue to add the ingredients, we're going to more fold it in than we are to actually beat it or mix it, uh, blend it. Right, right. It that were. totally makes sense. Okay. So next we want to um, start working with our filling here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one medium sized onion and that seems like that'll be about good for our 12 ounces of salmon that okay. we've got there. So um, I'm going to uh, cut these in half and then slice the top off so that it makes them very easy to peel. Right. And so we will be topless in the kitchen. So just be forewarned <laughs> there. That's very important. Um, hey, listen, while uh, Cosmo's working on these onions, I have an old kitchen trick that I was told, but I don't do this one very much. You know how you can slice onions and not cry? Someone told me once, so you light a match, blow it out, and hold it between your teeth. That, have, you ever, have you ever heard of that technique? It sounds like um, one of the kitchen tricks that I was um, told by different chefs when I was working in the kitchen industry. And uh, one of them was you take a piece of raw onion and you put it under your tongue. Another one is, oh, I didn't hear that one is you don't breathe through your nose. Right. And what it turns out is that all of those are just things to make chefs laugh at you. Ah, right. The uh, one thing that actually does work, and I know Cosmo came up with some funny ones, is actually taking the two halves of the onion and rubbing your eyes with them. Uh, and that will protect you from crying as well. Yeah, actually swim goggles will work. So Did you ever me. run out for a pot stretcher? Because I worked in the restaurant business as well. Did you ever have to do that? No, not quite. Oh, God. They would send me to another business and say, do you have a pot stretcher? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. It's, it's kind of an embarrassing thing to tell people. I did that once. It was like my first day of work. Okay, so I've got half of this chopped up. We're just going to put it in there. So I want to chop this onion fine. And so the easiest way to um, chop a fine onion that I've found is if you get it um, chop it halfway, then you get the top off, you get it peeled, and if you hold your hand in kind of a claw so that you're not getting the knife anywhere close to your fingers, and you slowly and carefully cut as close down to the quick as you can, and you just do that all along the onion. Oh, the claw. Then, yeah, the claw will keep your fingers intact. And a nice sharp knife, of course. Always. 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 Never nice. leave home without it. I mean, I've seen people chop onions before, but that is fine. Just let so you know, Cosmo, I'm on board with the claw. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. And you can scare your kids with it, too. Yeah. Yes. That's always the thing. There we go. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Yeah. And the onion's going to add some texture as well. It will, yeah, and so that's why you do want to be careful with the amount of water that's um, that's in the salmon to begin with. Right. Why you got to play with the texture because some onions will release a whole lot of water if they're very plump. So how are you feeling? You like? Uh, you think that's the right uh, liquidity so far? That's the word so I'm far. I'm so feeling far. really good about yeah. it. Yeah. And um, so next we're gonna put a little bell pepper in there, and I'm gonna use about half of this bell pepper here. We'll see how it looks in there. Adding a little color. Yeah, definitely. And just a little sweetness to it. You get the nice sweetness of the pepper that comes out when it starts cooking. Mm, this is going to be awesome. Yes, absolutely. So here you can almost do a little bit of the same kind of trick there. 
as you want it, nice and fine. Yeah, one of the cooks I worked with in the restaurant business was a guy named Lefty, and he did not use the claw technique, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, he didn't, well, he kind of earned that nickname over time. <laughs> it's probably a very quick time. Yeah, it, it didn't take long. We, didn't, we never let him use the meat slicer, actually. Yeah, so I'm going to try and mince these up a little bit finer just because these don't make you cry that way, so. Well, you can't make a blanket statement like that. There might be people who've had very traumatic experiences with bell pepper, red bell pepper. That's true. They could be. I've seen people run cry. screaming from jars of oh, olives. Nice. So, oh. Yeah. There we are. Oh, it's looking good. It's smelling good. Yeah, and then, um, so we're going to add a little... Um, a little spice to this we're gonna add a jalapeno pepper so this one's a little tricky because you want to um, unless you are into having things very spicy you really want to be careful how many seeds get in there yeah the seeds are the that's what's it called capet because capsaicin yeah. Capsa I can never remember that word right, right. capsaicin is it's pronounced. I always thought jalapenos were high up on the list but they're nowhere near high like no. habaneros are next up and well the thing is that they are inventing hotter peppers yeah. all the time. I don't see the appeal of it. So this one, you have to be any cutting any peppers. You just want to make sure you don't touch your eyes afterward. Yes, and it's uh, very good uh, hygienic case. And you know, and you know, you worked in the restaurant. You know the importance of a clean kitchen. That's absolutely and true. And especially with this dish, because you don't want anyone to get salmonella which is my one salmon joke, which I want to just throw <laughs> in there, Cosmo. I like it, I Cosmo's like it. Cosmo's going, why did I ever agree to this show? <laughs> no, I was going, when I was younger, I was going to come up with a list of children's books. One would be about Salmonella, one was going to be about Art Gecko, but mm -hmm. didn't get motivated enough. That's nice, that's a, a nice amount of uh, jalapeno there. Yeah, like that, and it's a nice fresh jalapeno, so um, it's got a lot of, juice in it and hopefully won't be overpowering from the garden with, with the spice this wasn't from the garden no but um but i will pull out the stuff that we brought from the garden later right. so now as i said before i'm just going to kind of fold this in i don't really want to like don't want to whip don't want to whip i don't want to beat it in there and so this is where um it starts to come into play about um the binders and so I obviously, as you can see here, it's very dry looking. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to add another binder here, which is mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, okay. And um, so that's a great thing to put in there, and that'll, use a, uh, that'll bind it as well as the egg. So we'll start with that amount, and we'll see how we're looking here. Yeah, well, it's really that. amazing that the, the onions and the bell pepper really add so much more. Absolutely. I mean, you have a lot more volume. Yeah, yeah that's true. And so um, I'm seeing here that the onion I used was maybe a little bit um, slightly larger than like a medium onion. So it looks like I might have to readjust here just a little bit. I think I'm going to add some more of those in there. That's why I had extra here. We'll just fold that in a little more. So panko, we'll and panko looking. gives you kind of a, a crunchier result, isn't it? Yeah, what the panko great thing about panko is that it really gives you that crispy outside yeah. that you're really looking for. Okay. Um, and with the uh, with the other more traditional breadcrumbs, I'm just going to go ahead and throw yeah, those in. Yeah, let's, let's live on the edge. We're living on the edge today here. Right. Let's get cooking. The more traditional ones give you um, almost more of like a hearty filling type of uh, mouth texture. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Then Great. we'll um, spice this up a little bit more here. Ah, we here some, we go. Got some spices over here. So here we've got some uh, granulated garlic powder. I'm going to throw that in there. All right. Here we've got some granulated onion powder. Uh, we already have onion in there, but okay, we'll do half of that. And I know we're ballparking this, but uh, what, maybe a tablespoon um, each? I'd say if you're already putting in like a whole onion, then maybe um, a teaspoon of the uh, onion powder okay. and um, just under a tablespoon of garlic, granulated garlic. If you're using garlic powder, then you would only use um, a teaspoon or half a teaspoon because there's so much garlic flavor yeah. in garlic powder. So this is what we're using in here is granulated. You don't want to dominate. Garlic, absolutely not. Right, yeah. You just want it to support those other flavors and add that really nice little 
hint of spice in there. Oh, and spicy. also, um, one thing that cooks really well with salmon is paprika. Mm -hmm. um, you always have to watch out in a bottle like this because that comes out extremely fast. Just had that experience with cinnamon, and this is from the garden. <laughs> of course, yes. Right. I've, it, so I've been growing this for years. I yeah. must tell you, I'm very impressed by the presentation. Right, absolutely. Uh, Okay, let's hear you pronounce this. Uh -huh. See, I'm no, from Massachusetts. I know how to say okay, it. Okay, well, we'll put in some Worcestershire sauce. We'll say it together, Worcester. everyone. One, two, three. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. There we go. No, there's a big town to the west of Boston called Worcester. Right, It's spelled yes. this way. Back to the Shire. I yeah. wonder if there are people who say it, whoops, and who say every syllable. I mean, Worcestershire. There may be oh, people Oh, there's plenty of people. Okay, well, how many So, uh, many? we're going to put in about a tablespoon of this. And that'll just give it that really rich umami flavor that we're looking for there. And then... Did you just uh, say your mommy? What'd you say? Ooh, mommy. Ooh, ma ooh mommy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fun to say that. And Thank then you. we'll also put in a little uh, cayenne pepper as mm -hmm. well. Just a little dash of that. Not too much there. A little dash, yeah. And as you notice, uh, this is in the container of uh, another, another spice that you could, instead of mixing all these spices together, you could just... We won't name it. <coughs> <laughs> old day but oh, uh, I gotcha. anyway um, <laughs> if you want if you're ever in a hurry and you want to make something like this that's the ticket just you don't have to mix everything everything that we're showing here so normally um, what I would do with this mixture is I would put it in the refrigerator okay. for about half an hour and that would allow some of those um, those binders to kind of thicken and set in there yeah. a little bit but because we're just um, well, we're not going to be here all day, so. Well, we are actually. No, <laughs> what? Now, here's a question. What if I have fresh salmon? Do I bake it first and then use it, or can, do I use fresh salmon in the cake? So, if you were making fresh, uh, if you're making this with fresh salmon, what you would traditionally do is um, you would pretty much make it. Um, you would. It's a little trickier because you have to cut the salmon up first. Right. You have to get the salmon crumble, which is tricky when it's raw because right. the texture is entirely different but usually you would make it up this into the same kind of mixture with mm -hmm. all these ingredients um definitely cool it and then you would um bake it usually you'd usually broil it uh, okay. on us on a partially greased baking sheet for mm -hmm. like 10 to 15 minutes on low broil that's the, the that would salmon be, cake that you're broiling that would be with raw okay. if you were making it with raw salmon but that's almost a, a, a little bit different of a recipe that's a different lesson yeah. because this is very much um, using either leftover or canned yeah so Thank the you. next thing here is I've got my aromatics and so these I just went out in the garden today and saw what was um, what was good and what was uh, important and I didn't have dill in my garden this year, but dill and salmon go really, really uh, great together. Yeah. And so I would most certainly have grabbed a big handful of that and we'd be putting it in there. But another really, really good herb for salmon cakes or crab cakes is um, fresh parsley. Nice. And that's, you can use either great. flat leaf parsley or I've got the scrunchy leaf. I forget what... I think scrunchy leaf is. Yeah, that. scrunchy. It's a technical term. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then here I've got a little bit of basil. We'll throw some of that in there. Um, these are chives. Okay. These yep. always add a nice little bit of flavor. Yep. We'll add just a tiny bit of rosemary That's in nice. there just so that you get that floral uh, little bit. And here's um, some oregano. And that we do a very special thing with is we wave it over the thing and then we just throw is it Is that away. how you, oh that's brilliant, it's yeah. like making a martini with oregano. Oregano, <laughs> yes. oregano is, a, is a very strong flavor and it can overpower a lot of dishes and so I rarely use it unless it's making something like a tomato sauce where I really want a very thick Italian kind of herb taste yes, right. to it. Before, but we're not doing that Let's today. pause for a second. So listen, if you've caught that technique of what Cosmo just did with oregano, send in your letters and postcards and let us know how it worked for you. We'd love to hear back. <laughs> you wave the magic wand. Wave it. Away, and, and then it disappears, poof. Maybe a three, three. <laughs> yeah, so here we're just gonna use a tiny bit of this, um, of this nice garden rosemary here, just because it has a very strong flavor. So we'll just cut off the tip, use about that much. And, and I truly mean this next comment, it'll sound like a joke, but what I like what Cosmo's doing, I, when I cook, I tend to, 
put in a lot of aromatics, a lot of, and let the fight it out. Right. But, you, but you're a, a more advanced cook, and you're saying, okay, you know, it doesn't have to be overpowering. Well, this is also a very much um, do what I say and not what I do kind of situation because <laughs> when I'm cooking at home, I'm very heavy handed with a lot of. Oh, you are. With oh, a lot of fresh herbs, yeah. um, <laughs> especially because with fresh herbs, you have a lot more leeway than you do with dried um, because the um the flavor is so much more delicate so you can really um you can add a lot more fresh herbs and, volume wise and you're thinking they're also fighting the fighting probably not the right word but the, uh, going up against the onion absolutely so they got to hold their own yeah and and what you really oh, that want basil's so fragrant yeah what you really want to do is let those flavors be delicate enough to complement one another and not have just one of them hit you in the mouth right when you first take a bite. And that's where letting it rest for a half hour in the fridge helps too, I would think. It also does help marry those flavors, which is very nice. Um, you do get more of, um, I mean, some, there's a lot of recipes that I love to make that are better the next day. Yes, all the, so many you recipes know, are like that. It's something like that. You get so much more subtlety of flavor. Oatmeal. <laughs> is a good example of that. I that think. one's better nine days later. <laughs> No, that's very true, isn't it? That, um, chili is an example of one. Oh, absolutely. Chili, certainly. Yeah. Okay, so here I've got some nice chopped up chives, too. We'll sprinkle a bunch of those on there because they don't really have a very strong flavor. And we've already, we've already got some really great flavors developing here. So normally, like I said, we would let this rest for a while but because I'm not going to do that and I'm going to put these directly in the pan what I want to make sure happens oh I forgot to no don't forget got, the parsley yeah, got parsley you think that parsley doesn't really add much flavor um, by itself but um, I just can't disagree more parsley fresh parsley is really great to add to so many so many dishes I Work, believe works as a breath freshener as well is that true? Did you know that? No, yeah. I have you, heard that, but I've never, I've never just garlicky meal. Yeah, just never bite. asked my girlfriend. Eat but. some, eat some raw parsley. Okay, so we'll put a nice little punch of that in there. That'll be good. There we go. Hey, you want trivia? You came to the right place, man. <laughs> and even if it's not, even if I made it up, we'll just pretend it's. Yeah, true. I'll do the match between the teeth next time I've, I'm chopping onions. Um, so. What I was uh, about to say was, because I'm not gonna let this rest and I wanna start frying this, I'm gonna turn on my heat here. Um, I'm gonna add one more egg. Okay. Can we get a close up? Are we on camera here? Let's, so one more egg because we're not letting it sit. But if you, if we weren't rushed, do you like the cons consistency right one there? One thing that I would have done that I would have just taken a little more time uh, with if I was doing this in my kitchen at home is I would have just minced those onions um, a little bit smaller They're a little mm, chunky right yeah, now, and that's yeah. one of the reasons why I'm putting this other well, egg in Why don't you take them out and then mince them? Yes like, we have Absolutely for that. actually, let's just throw this whole thing in the blender and we'll make a milkshake. I love oh Salmon milkshake. There that we sounds, go. What a treat. Mm -hmm. Kids love it. Oh, yeah, it's the best Okay, you can have chocolate strawberry vanilla or salmon <laughs> kids uh, okay, so um, I've also, let's see, we'll save some of that. Um, I actually have my best friend uh, in the studio today, and that is my cast iron skillet. Ah. Uh, a good cast iron skillet is the way I love to cook everything. I'll cook cakes in it, I'll cook everything. A couple of questions here. Have you ever, it's a, your friend, does it have a name? Its name is Bess. Best. Um, and it's so my best female. friend. Oh, best. Um, and, uh, and it will continue to be your best friend, but unless you put it in the dishwasher. Don't do that. Water's bad. Uh, so you like it. Even, and then you'll get a worst enemy. That's that's awful. And it will you'll be get, me. It won't be, be a it'll, pan. It'll be rusty. You're, you're there you worst. go. Uh, okay, even heat. Is that why we're crazy about cast iron? Um, it's, uh, it's if you have a well-seasoned cast iron and you take care of it, um, it'll be non-stick and of course um, the even heat and if you're ever in like a zombie or hostage situation I was just going there you can yeah. fight your way right out right right and okay. it makes a whimsical clang on the head 
I find. Absolutely. Yeah. Every yeah. time. Love that. Uh, and Very so because we're uh, going to cook these on a medium to high heat, we're not going to use a low uh, oil like extra virgin oh, uh, okay. olive oil. Right. Um, so today we're going to use, this is a mix of avocado, coconut, and safflower oil, which are all like medium to medium high heat oils. Oh, wow. Ab okay. Let's see. This, may I see this? You, yes, you may. Because if you're using something like oh. extra virgin olive oil, it uh, it has a very low smoking point, and so once it reaches that smoking point, then it actually starts to develop um, carcinogenic compounds in yeah. the oil yeah. and that are not good for you. Not good for you. Okay, that's fascinating. So let's go over this. I've, I've not seen this product before. Avocado, coconut, safflower. Yeah, so these are all oils that, have, um, that have a pretty... Um, mellow flavor profile and so it's going to allow us this mix is going to allow us to taste the food and not the oil I would have gone with um, olive oil not knowing better yeah and there's there's different um, levels but all olive oils are going to be um, relatively low heat extra virgin olive oil is obviously the lowest because it's the least processed uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about like two tablespoons of this oil to the pan and then before we um, put any of our mixture in here, we're gonna make sure that it gets hot enough so that the oil looks runny if you were to lift up the pan right, and look right. at it like or that. Or the sizzle test or something like that. Absolutely. Right. So we're gonna let that sit for a second while it heats up. And while we do that, we're gonna craft our patties over here. So this is just kind of an eyeball technique. You're just kind of grabbing what you think, what you think looks like will make a good patty size. And um, so I can already tell just by how, uh, how kind of fresh these are looking that um, we might have a little issue with them coming apart in the yeah, pan. Yeah, so I'm going to make sure that the, um, that the sides are nice and rounded instead of having little bits of onion and stuff sticking off because that's going to make it uh, easy for it to flake. So if that's what we're, we're bumping in into, then I would think it's really important not to flip too early. We want to let it sit on that side. That's absolutely side, true. Right? Yeah. yeah, and you want to have a, a balance, too, of, um, of, of having nice crispy sides, but also not being uh, dry inside. So let's, let's talk about... Oh, my about gosh. Our... What, let's talk about what I forgot. Uh-oh, what did we forget? Can you grab the salt and pepper? Oh, How salt How could we pepper. forget this? Gotta have that. How Those could are pickles. Forget? I'm not going to bring that up. Yep, and there's the salt right there. See, it's funny. This was an oven in our first episode, and now <laughs> we're using it to store spices. Oh, it's, it's still an oven. Oh, it's boy, it's so hot. hot. Yeah. It's so hot. Uh, uh, would you mind uh, helping me? I've all got right. uh, oh, some hands you're... already. Um, first of all, so this Himalayan is, salt. That's right. right. Pink salt, the best color for salt. Uh, how are we doing? Okay, we're grinding. So that's a grinder, so just give me, say one. Give me a few good grinds. We're going to add the equivalent of like a teaspoon of salt in there. What do you think? So just keep one. on going. Oh, yeah? Right. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep There we go. All right, that's like that. too much. No. Yeah, I was worried about that. Okay, that was Himalayan salt. <laughs> yep, and so now we've just right. got some black peppercorns in there, and we're going right. to add a nice few grinds of that, the equivalent of probably... Probably like quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon, something like that. Okay, you like we want that? a nice bit in there. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now, where were we? Back to the. Boy, good catch. I right. must say, Oof. I would have been happy without. It is amazing. All right. Now let's talk. We've had other cooks on the show who swear by Himalayan salt. Why do you like Himalayan salt? Well, um, it's great for a lot of different ways. I mean, one one reason is um, that I prefer any salt over iodized table salt. Okay, and why? That's um, just because of the flavor profile of it. Um, sea salt has like a really great um, kind of flavor. Himalayan salt, I feel, has like a more full flavor mm. than any other salt. But once you really get into being kind of a salt snob, you really it's over. The game's over. You really but... can't go back to um, to iodized table salt. It'll taste like chlorine. This is. Um... I, I will just say, having just had a little, it's salty. It's a, it's a salty <laughs> salt, I think. It tastes like salt, right? It, it has that salt um, uh, The salt profile, yeah. That's the word. I was looking yeah. at you. See, you read my mind. Though it's not a lot in there, but you read it. It's uh, it's doing its job, then. It's doing its job. Yeah. Rather of a salty flavor. You're right. So here I see um, there's a tiny little wisp of smoke coming off the, the pan there. So that means that it is ready for some cakes. Oh, ah, good. Very observant. 
So other trace, I'm not sure people know this, and the, you know, the flick of water, make sure you're at the temp you like. Yeah, absolutely. You want sizzling once you put it like in. And it looks like this is actually a little bit... Um, Hot to trot? Uh, the angle is a little strange here, so you can't really see on the camera, but it's... It forms almost like legs as the um, as yes. the oil travels yep, from side yep. to side in the pan. It almost flows, not quite like water, but um, like a thick water, a nice yes, thick right. water. Yeah. Ah, okay. Here's more trivia. Ready? On We're a completely, ready. Slightly unrelated topic. You ready? Give it to us. Okay. Uh, windows, liquid or solid? Oh, they're most certainly a liquid. They are a liquid. A slow, yeah, glass slow is... something liquid. Slow yeah. Liquid. Okay, good job. I actually lived in a um, in a house that was a Victorian house right here in Nevada City for years that was um, built in 1864, and uh, you could actually look through the remaining original windows, and you could see that they looked like they were streaked, streaked, yeah. and you could actually see that they were thicker, thicker at, the, at bottom. the bottom. That's right. It was oh, amazing. Oh, we know this I, stuff. It was one of those stories that I thought you know, was someone pulling my leg until... And that's why yeah. tens, even dozens of people like to watch the show for the amazing science facts that you will get. These look gorgeous, and if you can hear them on camera, they are sizzling away. That's right, you got a nice little sizzle, and as you can see, um, they've got um, a good amount of oil in there that will keep them cooking. If oh. your pan is too dry, it'll only cook um, the part that's directly in contact with the pan. The uh, aroma of these just hit me there. The smells incredibly. This, I don't know. This, this, I, I don't want to hurt the feelings of our other chefs. This might be perhaps one of the best <laughs> recipes we've done here. It just smells well, wait incredible. till you taste it, John, and then we'll truly make the decision. Right. Well, okay, so while these are cooking, um, let's just get rid of this here, and um, and we'll make us up a little sauce to go with it. How's that sound? I love it. Awesome. So uh, what we're gonna make today, it would have been nice if I had that dill, we could make a little kind of dill aioli kind of um, thing. But what we'll do right now is we'll make almost a half tartar sauce, half sriracha aioli. How's that sound? Ooh, that sounds awesome. So we're getting a little spice on spice on spice here. So if you are trying this uh, recipe at home, make sure that you tailor it to your individual tastes. Right. So to do that, we are going to need some more mayonnaise. Which you pulled out of the oven. That's true, yes. It's nice and hot. Good place to put the mayonnaise. Yeah, no, don't don't make your mayonnaise hot. It's, that's a whole that's a whole other health. Then we are there. approaching the world of salmonella. That is absolutely true. Let's not joke about that. It's not right. even funny, man. Uh, and so then I've got here just some uh, small kosher dill pickles. See your salmon joke work? Uh, funny once, funny every That's time. That's right. Salmon joke. Uh, so we're just gonna mince these up real fine here. Uh, so this is your dill, in a sense. I mean, they're kosher pickles. That's right. We are getting dill in there. I, I didn't think about that. That's what I'm good for. It was in my uh, it was in my chef subconscious. That's what it was. The dill had to get in there that's, some way. That's the real dill. <laughs> the real dill, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we're gonna try and uh, chop these as small as we can, um, just so that it will work as kind of a dipping sauce or a sauce that's easily spooned on top. And we're not gonna forget that we've got things moving over here. So uh, one thing that if you've got, here we're dealing with kind of a small burner, as you can see. So once these kind of start to solidify, I'm just kind of testing with the corner of the spatula here, how we're looking. Seems like we're doing pretty good, but if it, they start to cook too fast in the center, I might want to try to delicately rotate them around. I mean, you're really, same uh, process with pancakes as well. Got Absolutely. To, yeah. Yeah, 100%. It's all about the even, uh, the even distribution of heat. And I will tell you, my mistake with pancakes, I probably made this mistake for 20 years, is uh, starting it too high, the heat too high, and you think it's good, and then... You can't do it. You got to go medium and be, let it take a longer time. Yeah, that's definitely Burned a lot true. Pancakes. So here for this sauce, um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to make a, a good little bit of it because it'll stay good for a couple days. You can put, um, you can put the remains in the refrigerator, or whatever you want. Um, it'll be good with the salmon cakes that are good the next day too. Right. So uh, I'm starting here with about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. 
and I'm going to start with about the same amount of pickles in there, about a quarter cup. So that's actually a little more uh, than I did here. If I change my mind, I'll reserve the right later, but I'll just stick those pickles here for... You can always add. That's right, you can always add. But you can't pull the onions out and mince them again. Now, are you ready to have a frank conversation about homemade mayonnaise? Uh, it depends how frank. Well, is. that's a good, maybe a Francis <laughs> conversation. Um, if I were really inspired and made homemade mayonnaise, yeah. what's the shelf life? That I've got to put in the fridge right away. There's a little more concern. Yeah, that I mean, unless right? you're making something that's uh, like from emulsified oil, like if you're um, blending something and you're making it an eggless mayonnaise, which okay. is technically not yeah, a mayonnaise per se, is, yeah. but it's done, people do it. Um, yeah, if you're making it with eggs, you're looking at like, three-ish days, okay. usually. Yeah. Um, Don't leave it on the roof of your car in July, basically. Yeah, if it tastes spicy and you didn't put anything spicy in there, That's then the it's, it's too late, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good point. Uh, so then, we're also going to, uh, in here, we'll add probably like um, a tablespoon of uh, lemon juice. So a quarter cup of mayonnaise, quarter cup of dill pickle, uh -huh. tablespoon of lemon, just so people can get this. That's about right, yes. And then we want to uh, come back in here, get some more salt and pepper in there, the spices of life is. And you know what? I'm feeling a little frisky. I'm going to throw in a little bit of this onion powder that we had left over there. Getting crazy here. Yeah, Let's whoa, get cooking. Whoa. Nevada County Media will rue that day. And because we've got all these sitting out here, I'm going to add a little bit of paprika in the hand. First in the hand. So basically your approach to cooking is, if it's in arm's reach, it's going in. That That's is um, part of my secret that um, not many people know when they uh, ask how I make great food. But um, as we can see, I guess that is. But uh, if you had a pile of pencil shavings, don't use that, even if it's no. close by. You know. Yeah, I guess it's uh, seat of the pants cooking. Is... That's, and that's... I think that's true cooking, that's all. Yeah, I'm also don't put those in the cooking either. No, seat of the pants. No, don't. Good point. Yes. I, I must say our, our studio audience is easily amused. <laughs> easily amused, I think is the expression. I love it, I love it. Otherwise our jokes wouldn't go down. So uh, they they might not be going down anyway. As I said, low standards. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Ready so uh, I'm not going to flip yet. I'm going to make sure. See, these are cooking a little slow. I'm not used to cooking on a hot plate here. So, oh, well, well, let's talk about that. So we're using hot plate here. We're yeah. obviously frying them. Um, but baking, is that your preferred method? My preferred method is always um, a gas uh, stovetop if that's what, if I have that option. Oh, okay. And the reason, too, is it's not necessarily the... Um, I mean, I just like cooking on gas. See, this one wants to split a little bit, so we got to be really careful. And we also got to make sure that they're cooked evenly on the bottom like you were saying because otherwise those binders aren't going to make a solid thing if i were to try and flip those right now we would have a whole we would have a salmon hash in there and please remember cosmos would have normally taken a half hour in the fridge uh but then he and i would have had to think of something to talk about for a half hour so we just went right to the pan absolutely if i was here earlier i'd we'd do the magic of right. i hear these have been sitting um and so as far as that goes with the heat, it's all just about knowing the stove that you're cooking on. And so it could be um, just my neighbor's gas stove and it would cook completely different or could yeah, right. than mine. It's all just about the, the monster you know. And so uh, here, uh, we haven't added the sriracha, sriracha yet. So we'll put a little bit of that in there. Excuse you. Oh, that was, yeah, I was gonna say that was the bottle. <laughs> And then uh, we'll mix this up, and let's see if I've got any more of those aromatics left over, because those could be really yummy in there too. You know, I remember this is. I'm actually going to say something truthful for once, but the uh, there was like a sriracha shortage post pandemic. The, the they're in L. A. Oh, and they really? Said, yeah, and they said they weren't. They're, I guess they're having supply chain issues or something. Wow! For uh, I'm glad you brought yours. For as much as um, as I know people who use it, that could have caused a riot. Exactly, and I'm that's so like popular. just my girlfriend alone. Yeah, hot stuff. Yeah. 
She sure is. Thank you. So, uh, that's fine. There you go. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll just set them up. You're not going to go. So because we've got these nice little aromatics, I'm just going to take a pinch of uh, what I've got. And again, this is, this is, we're just playing with flavors on a very basic recipe. It's just, you know, the lemon juice, the dill, the salt and pepper, the sriracha for the sweetness, and the mayonnaise in there to make it a spread, basically, or a dip, or spoon it on, whatever you want. A lot of different flavors there. Yeah, and then we're just playing with it. The little bits of onion, the little bits of these aromatic herbs. Now this sauce here, probably more of a pickle <laughs> flavor. Right. But this one over here, a lot more going on. Yes, the real dill, as you had said. Real yes. Dill. Okay, so we got this. It's starting to look kind of nice. It's got a little bit of the pinkish would, color. Would from I be too forward if I had a little taste of it? I would highly recommend it. All That's right. If a chef does not taste his food, then you can guarantee he does not make good food. No, that's it, right? Let's, uh, let's take it off for a spin here. Oh, that is balanced beautifully. That is remarkably good. Is that true? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. No one's dominating. That's yeah. very nice. Yeah. And I would even, you know, um, with, I mean, you obviously, when you're dealing with raw eggs, you don't really want to be tasting, but if I was cooking at home, um, pretty much with anything, I'm tasting constantly because yeah. that's where you get you where where the flavors come from. Does it need more grounding body than maybe ooh, a little more onion powder? Does it need, you know, a little light kind of bright brightening up and then ooh, a little more lemon juice? Those kind of things you just, that's the beauty about cooking is that it's not about X amount of this and Y amount of that. Yeah. It's all about like, you're feeling it, you're in it, you're creating something. The colors of it, you know. Absolutely. The, yeah, some, it goes from uh, industrial to artistic at that point. Absolutely, and that's really the fun of making recipes like this where you're making something colorful, you're making something fun, and if you're not having fun doing it and enjoying the process, then you're not getting what you What So what was it. your first recipe that you owned? Is that, yeah, this, I mean, growing up, you obviously loved to cook. I did, yeah, and I learned to cook um, pretty early, and um, it started with just, you know, pouring cereal and milk, but pretty soon, by the time I was, I think, seven or eight, I was, um, it was cheese quesadillas, uh. obviously, pancakes, you know, those are um, a kid's favorite. I would even make, you know, uh, different things like eggnog, and I loved caramel corn, and I loved, you know, sweet things, all those kind of stuff, but anything with cheese in it, I think, was... Always my favorite growing up. You know, just a note to my producer, we might want to look into a cereal and milk episode. I think that would <laughs> probably be a big hit with the younger demographic. <laughs> yeah. So I'm turning these again because they are still not quite getting the crust that I want on this here. This little hot plate is just going a little bit slower. Yeah. But... I think I might just take the plunge on one of these, and I think I might just... You're going to go for the flip? Flip it and okay. see how it does, so... Well, we'll see if we censor this uh, after. That's right. right. Drum roll, please. Okay, here we go. You got it. And there you go, man. Oh! There we go. That's fine. There we go. There we go. Well done. See? Ha-ha. <laughs> uh, I was not nervous or sweaty. <laughs> This is the okay, trappy. This, this the is trap a tricky pool. one, though. This is yours. See, oh. I went to I went to scoop under it, yeah. and it uh, started to form a split down the middle. Yeah. And so that just means that it's not quite ready. I mean, if worse came to worse, first of all, I like these single serving sizes that you use. But I mean, you, we could have gone smaller, and uh, probably would have gone through it a little bit faster if we wanted to. Absolutely. But and who wants a smaller salmon kick? Nobody. No. And the way that um, the way that that we kind of made the recipe today is very much like a a garden a garden salmon cake. This right. isn't like a stodgy just it's nothing but breadcrumbs and egg and fish. I mean, we added all kinds of things. We added, you know, so many different colors and and but when we added the onion and the bell pepper, there's a lot of water. Uh, right, right. In those. Yep. And so it definitely affects the cooking time. Um, and also 
will affect the consistency in the end because they'll be so that much more juicy. So for that reason, uh, we would I can't imagine you would ever use mushrooms in a salmon kit because those are have so much water in them. I'll, I'll give you a secret. You could do anything you want in the kitchen. Um, as long as the shades are drawn. I think that's just the one thing we want. I to usually would not, no. Um, but I do like putting mushrooms in like a meatloaf. Okay, so let, let's... Which is a little... Oh, yeah. kind of oh, like a beef a, a salmon cake, yep, yep, kind yep. of. Um, how about crab cakes? Would the recipe be any different? Um, oh, I got you on that one. <laughs> oh. I, I would make a crab cake uh, with this same recipe, but I would make sure make sure that you have enough crab in there. A crab cake that does not have enough crab in it and that doesn't have the big lumps, yeah. that's, if I had one key to making a good crab cake, it would be to keep nice big lumps of the filling in there. Okay, so, we, this, so it's not this, this takes us to another mixing. place because who's gonna make crab cakes with not enough crab places that soak the tourists, right? That's right. Here's a rule of thumb, this is oh. my own. Um, the restaurants that have the best view of the ocean have the worst food. <laughs> That's been my, you know, you can, if you disagree with me, send those cards and letters in. But uh, that's my rule of thumb about restaurants. I have, have actually experienced that multiple times, yeah. John. Because they're not making money on the food, they're making money on the view. That's absolutely correct. You could serve them day old french fries and they'd Same. still pay for it. Yep. So, uh, so here we had a very successful flip, and then we had a not so successful flip. So that's why we made three. We'll at least have two good looking ones, right? Right, exactly. The other one will go to the dog. No, just kidding. The heck they will. <laughs> wow. uh, okay, so now we can actually start just getting our plates ready here. So, oh, so let's talk about this. Yes. Um, yes. For folks who have not made salmon cakes before. Um, is it, well, I just had an experience cooking salmon on the grill recently, uh, which leads me to this thought. Um, is it possible to overcook a salmon cake or not so much? But, um, you want firmness all the way through, I'm guessing? Yeah, so what we've done here is we've made them relatively thick, and like I said before, there's also a lot of water in there. So um, we've given ourselves kind of a cushion of, um, of cooking time that, that allows us to be a little more lackadaisical and patient with the cooking process. Um, normally, if, um, or not normally, but if these uh, were made with um, more breadcrumbs, and if the salmon was um, like dry leftover dry. salmon, yeah. that kind of thing, you would absolutely have to worry about that. Because um, if you get that nice crispiness on the outside, but you cut into it and it's like eating a rice cake. Right. It just Not so kind good. of ruins the whole thing. Then you need a lot of this. You have to have a good view of the ocean if you're going to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Which we don't have up Absolutely. here in Nevada County. Right. right you would if you right. got up high enough. If you got up but... very high. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're just going to put some of this in these little ramekins that I've got here. That'll allow you to have as much or as little oh, I thank you. as you want there. Do some of that in there. Mm. And um, you always want to make sure that you're paying attention to how pretty the plate looks. If you've already made, if you've already spent all the time making this look so nice, right? Okay, let's see your technique here. So we'll do a little, little sprinkle on top there, make it look fancy, right? I must say, what you're doing right now is my total weakness blind spot in cooking. I oh never, yeah. I, I never worry about presentation. The prettying it up yeah. and I'll do a little little bit of that just pickles on the side so you can get a little bit of those if you feel like you need to. Yeah this is and this is this little step here is really what elevates a meal. All things being equal. Absolutely. Yeah that is definitely true. And Course. And I like also that you wash the plates before coming in. A lot of people uh, <laughs> that elevates the dish. Yes, I, I think that's quite true. <laughs> and then uh, why not save some of that parsley and just put it on the side there and make it look see. pretty, right? Look at that. Do some of that. Heck, even one of these little. Well, hey, listen. One of these little basil let's, leaves. Uh, let's let's nice, talk about this. So salmon cake. 
But is there a fish that you wouldn't use for making, like a, a fish kit of any sort? Well, there's just certain fish that, um, you have to know the texture of the fish. There's certain fish that I would use, that I would find a way to put in any, everything because I love it so much. Um, but then there's also fish that I wouldn't touch if it was made in a five star. So I'm from the East Coast originally. Hotel or three star Michelin restaurant. And one of the great fishes of the Atlantic is uh, bluefish. But it's very oily. You've got to eat it the day you catch it. And I'm just wondering if you had an oily fish. Well, I, I wonder what difference it would make to the cake. Something to think about. Yeah, um, you Look would basically you would need to um, to add something to soak it up more, or like we've done today, making it very fresh with um, you know brightening up those flavors with the. Um, oh, we have got to get that. How are we doing? We got this on camera. Look how wonderful that is. Yeah, and so that's. That's looking nice. We've got, oh, you know, um, um, a nice little mix of color there. And um, one thing that I usually do like to do is just one more little thing this of color. Cosmo ruins the dish. No, this is absolutely not, not for any kind of flavor or anything. Uh, but when you have a white plate, you just have something that looks nice look on there. That. You know, absolutely. just a little, just a little something on there. Oh. To just make it look pretty. Look at that. You know? Okay, now. That's pretty tremendous. Beautiful all we have presentation. Let's try it, John. I'm ready. I've been ready for that for quite some time. All right, I'm doing that. Okay. Should we make it look pretty over here a little bit more? Get this out of the way. Should we readjust where these go? See, I put all my eggs in one basket. I was wondering about that. There's a famous headline when Spain invaded a, a region and the people are trying to leave and there's too many Basques in one exit. I thought that was a very great headline. I wish I'd come up with that. All right. Okay, so here we are. We've made our salmon cake. Everything's ready to go except just got to dig into it. Uh, I have the best job in the world. I'm going <laughs> to go with the southern corner here. I'm doing this without sauce originally. Oh, okay. I'm going to do it. Oh, it's perfect. That is mag absolutely magnificent. That is so good. So you see how all those fresh flavors of the onion and um, and the bell pepper and the moisture within them have left um, this very, very moist. Yes, it's very moist. Yeah. yeah it's, oh, it's tremendous. It's got the nice little um, crumbly crust on it, but it's very much the opposite of dry. It's... Um, and that's, that's what I personally like out of a salmon cake. Oh, there's so much going on when you add the sauce to it. Mm-hmm. Then try it with a little squirt of lemon on there. That'll... I, I, you know, it's funny. Get a whole uh, other it's, freshness. It's a bad quality in someone who does a cooking show, but I'm kind of speechless right now. Because <laughs> this is just tremendously good. And, you know, we get a lot of... Uh, a lot of our interns want to work the... Uh, want to work the uh, show because, you know, they get free food. I would hope so. They won't be getting any today. <laughs> That's kind of a fun thing. We'll just milk this for all it's worth. <laughs> oh. I must tell you, whether it's plain or with lemon juice or with this wonderful aioli. Yeah. And it's a, just a tremendous... I, I seriously, I think I'm going to make this for dinner time. That's how much I love it. This is really, really good. Yeah, and see how we kind of put some fun um, stuff to play with on the plate here too, because even just a little bit of that sriracha in a bite changes it, and yeah. so you get you can make each bite a little bit different. And there's a little sweetness there in the in the salmon cake. It's just oh, it's just, it's tremendous. It's a delicious meal. Yeah, those onions and the um, and the bell pepper both as they um, slightly caramelize inside, um, just as they kind of steam, is pretty much how they're being cooked inside there. Oh, um, beautifully done. It releases the sugars and really um, lets the, the flavors kind of meld together in a good way. And I want you to know, I, I, I'm slowing down because if I didn't slow down, I think I'm going, rah, 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 <laughs> and, you know, it's a bad um, you can do that off camera, John. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear from our studio audience for a tremendous... 
tremendous segment. I'd like to thank Cosmo Merriweather. You're welcome. Very for much. On. Oh, been a pleasure. I, I, would you come back? I absolutely would. And um, he's a tough act to follow, but don't let that throw you. We are always looking for uh, local chefs and cooks who uh, want to show us what they can do. And remember, if it's cereal and milk, we got room for you. It doesn't matter the age. Love to have you. That's right. Um, come cook something. I strongly recommend that you make this uh, meal for you tonight. I um, I would have it if I didn't finish. I would finish it all tonight, but I would have it for breakfast the next day. I put some maple syrup on mm -hmm. that. It's just tremendously good. Make it into a milkshake. So thank you, Cosmo. You're quite welcome, John. Thanks again for having ah, me. Yeah. What, what, a, what a team, huh? There Forget about it. Um, thank you for joining us on Let's Get Cooking. I'm John Voorhees, and uh, can't wait oh. to see you next time. And uh, thanks to our studio audience and to uh, everyone here at NCM. And again, send in your recipes. We'd love to have you. Would you wasn't the worst time in the world, right? Oh, it was great fun. So what's not to love? See you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>